reading from the book of Psalms, Psalm 71, verses 1 through 8 and 14 through 18. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be to me a rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress. Rescue me, O my Lord, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of the unjust and cruel. For you, O Lord, are my hope. My trust, O Lord, from my youth. Upon you I have learned from my birth. It was you who took me from my mother's womb. My praise is continually of you. I have been like a portent to many, but you are my strong refuge. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all day long. But I will hope continually and will praise you yet more and more. My mouth will tell of your righteous acts, of your deeds of salvation all day long. Through their number is past my knowledge. I will come praising the mighty deeds of the Lord God. I will praise your righteousness, yours alone. O oh God, from my youth you have taught me, and I still proclaim your wondrous deeds. So even to old age and gray hairs, O oh, oh God, do not forsake me, until I proclaim your might to all the generations to come. The word of the Lord. God. Gracious God, let our words convey the love that we feel towards one another and to you, and may we always be righteous in your sight. Amen. As you just listened to Jen read Psalm 71, the idea conveys that each of us needs to share our love and wonder of God with the generations that come after us. So even to old age and gray hairs, O oh God, do not forsake me until I proclaim your might to all of the generations to come. We are loved and cared for by a gracious God who only asks for our faith in return. That faith includes carrying on his story to the generations to follow. God knew Avery, Andrew, Jennifer, and Nate before they were born. He knows their stories, and a big part of those stories include the faith their families and their church have shared with them. They have been sewn together with love, kindness, hope, confidence, loyalty, and faithfulness. They grew up knowing God was a part of their home and that he was the reason their parents loved each other and the reason they love their siblings. A loving God has created a family bond that will keep them together even when they are apart. They have learned the tenets of faith from family, friends, and teachers. They have learned from the examples of others, both good and bad. They have realized that sometimes doing the right thing is a difficult choice, but through their faith, they have learned to follow the right path. The four of them have the same spiritual upbringing thanks to their time at Poland Presbyterian Church. Their faith experiences have been similar up to this point, but now that they are all leaving to go off in different directions, what will they carry with them to keep God in their lives? How have we, as their faithful family, shown this next generation what to hold on to in their lives of faith? What have we done to influence them and will they be able to carry it on in all their new lives and all of their new examples of what they will be doing throughout their days? A person who has affected my faith is Mrs. Carcelli. I grew up with her as my youth director, so she has played a very big role in my life. Especially since I've moved up to senior high, I've spent so much time with her that I've accidentally called her mom on a few occasions. Mrs. Carcelli has taught me so many things, and volunteering with her has showed me how to be a good Christ Christian. She's always looking for new projects to do around Poland and Youngstown, which shows me how much she wants to help the community and teach God's joy, spread God's joy. Spending time volunteering with her has showed me how the, the grace of God can so greatly affect people's lives. Mrs. Carcelli has showed me how important it is to do God's work by helping the community. 
She has also showed me how to spread the word of God. For as long as I can remember, I have participated in some form of Christian education. When I was young, I was a student in Logos when that was still around, and I have always done vacation Bible school. When I grew too old to participate in those, I was a helper at both of them, as well as every week in Sunday school. Now I'm a youth deacon, and I have had the honor to serve on the Christian Education Committee. Mrs. Carcelli has been a part of my whole journey and has been in charge of all of those events. I love that I'm now old enough to assist Mrs. Carcelli in teaching the ways of God, and I hope that the children I am teaching have the same experience that I did in learning how to live a good Christian life. Mrs. Carcelli has made an impact on my faith because not only has she taught me the ways of God, she has showed me how to spread his grace and pass my faith on to others. One of the traits that defines a Christian and a Presbyterian is service to God, church, and the community around them. It is our job as Christians and Presbyterians to give back to the church, the community, and God. The person in the congregation who has inspired me more than anyone else to volunteer my time to the church and the community around me is Mrs. Walker. Mrs. Walker consistently gives back to the community and church in several ways. I'm pretty sure if I go to Giant Eagle any time during the church's week, uh, for participation in the Salvation Army bell ringing, I will see her at any time. <laughs> um, it seems, um, she also is a part of the group that goes to the rescue mission on a regular basis. The one, the one time I was going down as a, as a fill-in for someone, and it wasn't even her month to be there, but she was there anyways. She's, she's involved in the mission committee. She's involved in things throughout the church. She has been consistently... Uh, confirmation sponsor. She was even my confirmation sponsor. And she volunteers teaching Sunday school. One of my fondest memories is actually from Sunday school that she taught. It was from Creighton Eat, and it was run by Mrs. Walker and Mrs. McPherson. Mrs. Walker's impact on me started when she was my confirmation sponsor. During the time I was being confirmed to the church, we volunteered at the Ursuline um, House Christmas Party, put together a Christmas shoebox, and participated in the crop walk. I participated in some of my first community service with her, and her passion for helping others definitely rubbed off on me. To my knowledge, Mrs. Walker was the person who recommended me to be part of the Mission Study Committee, which is one of the best opportunities in my life. The Mission Study Committee, in, co in conjunction with the Pastoral Nominating Committee, opened my eyes about how vital service to the church actually is to the survival of the church. I wanted to thank Mrs. Walker for having such a big impact on my character, my participation within the church, and on my faith. There are a few people who have strongly influenced my life religiously and outside of church. I do not think she realizes the impact she's had on my life. As a child, I was always looking up to this person as a role model. This individual is the most selfless person I have ever met and always giving to others. She is my grandma, Sue Ike. As a child, I could always remember being excited to go over to her house. She would let me eat cookies and watch TV or play with my toys. Oftentimes, when my mom came to pick me up, I would hide because I didn't want to leave grandma's. <laughs> grandma and I would drive around her neighborhood in her golf cart and she would tell me stories of her child. Seeing her attend church every Sunday and pray before every meal, has shown me how dedicated to her faith she is. Seeing her dedication has truly encouraged me to become more actively involved in church. Thank you, Grandma, for everything that you have done for me. I love you so much. I would also like to express my thanks to Mrs. Carcelli. I've known her for a long time, and I cannot even begin to thank her enough for how much she has done. She has always been there when I needed someone to talk to. She has been a huge part of my life, from listening to my boy problems freshman year <laughs> to help me apply for colleges and scholarships senior year. These two amazing women have had such an amazing impact on my life, and I'm so grateful that they're in my life. Thank you. Christians possess many admirable traits, but courage and the willingness to do the right thing are the most vital. One of our oldest and most dedicated members of the Poland Presbyterian Church has portrayed those traits throughout his life. Don Brooks is truly a man to admire for so many reasons. As the famous Presbyterian minister Fred Rogers asserted, 
We live in a world in which we need to share responsibility. It's easy to say, it's not my child, not my community, not my world, not my problem. Then there are those who see the need and re respond. I consider those people my heroes. Don Brooks is a man who sees the need and responds. Like many Americans from the greatest generation, Don responded by serving our country as a B-24 pilot in World War II. In addition, he sees uh, a need and responds as an active member of the community and the Poland Presbyterian Church. Don has served our church in many roles, including as a deacon, an elder, and, and as an usher captain. Furthermore, he has been generous with donations for various funding drives such as the pipe organ and church renovations. In the community, Don remains active in the Youngtown, Youngstown Kiwanis and has an active social life. Throughout his life, Don has been a supportive and loving husband, father, and grandfather. In many ways, he has served as a role model for me. He has demonstrated the importance of being active in the service of others. I have learned about gen generosity and dedication from Mr. Brooks. In addition, he is an excellent example of the importance of personal communication and making connections with others. He is such an interesting, intelligent, and witty man who always has a great joke to tell, even if it's not totally appropriate for church. <laughs> the, uh, the many admirable traits that Mr. Brooks has modeled will sculpt me into a better man in my future. Well, as you've heard in their own words, these four young men and women have been shown the right path by the generations before them. They have been shown service, compassion, devotion, kindness, and loyalty. They have been shown that the key to being a good Christian is a lifelong relationship with God. As they each go off on their own individual paths, may they carry these lessons with them. I hope that they find a campus chapel to visit Remember, God's house is welcoming, no matter what city it's in. I hope that they find service projects to work on, because giving of your time and talent allows you to become closer to God. My biggest hope for Avery, Andrew, Jen, and Nate is that they will come back to visit the church family that loves them. Now as we send them off to follow the plan God has laid out for them, it is their turn to share their stories of faith with the next generation. Amen.